chat with Top Don, and we're going to go through a calibration process to do lane departure warning calibration on this Toyota. And I'm joined with Hawken to be able to do this calibration together. Now, normally, this is a one-man job, but we're going to have Hawken on the tool. I'm going to be the monkey in the middle doing all the process so you can see what we're doing as he narrates through the tool. So, Hawken, what are we working on today? So we have a 2017 Toyota Highlander. Uh, we're going to be calibrating the forward camera here. Um, so we're going to use the Top Don Phoenix Elite uh, to do that process from the tool side. Uh, we've also got our T90000 here, which we have hooked up to the vehicle to maintain the battery throughout the process. Uh, the vehicle is going to have key on engine off so we can run the tool. And of course, when you're doing that, you should always have a maintainer hooked up to the vehicle, uh, if at all feasible. Uh, for any reason, you have to close the hood, you may have to disconnect it, but of course the battery does need to be fully charged before you do a process like this because of the fact that the tool will eventually, with the key on engine off, drain the battery. So as far as the tools go for the ADOS calibration, we've already pulled all those out. We've done this process so we know what tools we need. However, the tool will tell you as you go through this process. So the tape measure of the five axis laser, a uh, cool feature of the Top Don kit are the little plates that go on the floor so you don't have to use tape. Uh, this is for the tape measure and the alignment of the mirror. We have the cross laser, of course, the calibration stand and mirror in plumb bob, and you'll see the reason that we have those. So Hawken, why, uh, why would we need to do this calibration? What would cause us to need to do this on this Toyota? So there's a variety of reasons that ADOS, as a general statement, would need to be recalibrated. Uh, it could be the vehicle was in a collision. Uh, if a part has been replaced where an ADOS component resides, so a windshield for a camera, uh, a bumper for something like radar, something to that effect. You should always consult the vehicle manufacturer's recommendations to determine if a calibration is recommended. Uh, wheel alignment is another thing that can uh, cause a calibration to be needed. Uh, you want to remember that everything with ADOS is about geometry. So anything that changes the geometry of the vehicle, how it's traveling down the road, is something that could affect whether the ADOS needs to be calibrated. Uh, same thing can be said for any you know, components that are removed that would change the geometry of a component mounted behind it or on it that would be something that would also change that overall geometry of the vehicle and thus necessitate an ADOS calibration. So we're gonna go through this process. It's actually a pretty simple process, but I guess the biggest thing that we want to, uh, to really hit home is it does take precision. This is not something that you can fly through and guesstimate and throw a target up in front of the car and hope and pray that it works. Uh, so our first step is going to be to clean the windshield. Uh, we're gonna get that done while Hawking is setting up the scan tool and uh, we'll put that up on your screen and we'll get this process started. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do here is gonna be with the tool. Uh, we've on the main screen here for the Phoenix Elite. We're gonna tap on ADOS, and then we're gonna tap on ADOS calibration. Now you can see here they're giving you some of the basics as far as how you set things up. But it also does walk you through all of this information as you go through uh, all of the steps. These are just the generic instructions. They do give you specific instructions for the process you're gonna be performing. So we can see there's five total pages down here in the bottom right corner. There they, they're showing you all of this. So here they're talking about what we're gonna be doing, which is measuring to the front camera. So you can see the geometry of the operation. But again, the tool's gonna to walk us through each one of these steps as we go through this. All right, so we're on the auto VIN. So it's gonna go ahead and automatically ID the vehicle. And anytime you do an automatic identification, it may ask you additional questions. So here it's asking us what brand it is. It is a 2017 Highlander, which is obviously a Toyota. We're gonna select 16 pin DLC for North America. And smart key, uh, this one does not have a physical blade. So it is in fact a smart key and it is equipped with radar cruise. So we're gonna go ahead and say that. You can see it's just recording some of the basic information we entered in. We're going to hit OK, going to hit OK again, and now the tool is going to talk to the vehicle. OK, so now we're on the main screen where we have all of the ADOS information. So you can see on the left side here, we've got ADOS system select, ADOS system scan, ADOS calibration, and then health report. So what I typically like to do is go ahead and go to the system scan, and you'll see we have a topology map very similar to the topology map you're familiar with on all of our tools. So we're going to go ahead and scan the vehicle first just to see if we have any pending faults or concerns with anything prior to doing the calibration. And this is something you should always do before you do a calibration, just to verify that everything is connected correctly, functioning the way it's supposed to, and of course that you know what systems are on the vehicle and a scan will confirm that. So now we've got a report that we can save. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna save it. 
Obviously, we're not connected to the internet, so it's not going to save it online, but we're going to save it local to the tool. We're going to make this a pre-repair since we're not completing the calibration yet. And then we're going to go back. So we're back on the main screen. So now we're going to go to calibration function. Now it's going to auto filter which functions are available on this specific vehicle. So the camera runs the lane departure. So we're going to go into the camera, which or lane departure, and we're going to see this option here, all these different choices. Uh, to do the camera itself, you have to do this function first, which is uh, recognition camera target position memory. And then you have to do recognition camera access adjust after you do that. So essentially what you're doing is going into this first. This does not require any action from us other than to go through it with the tool. It's just having us basically look at these values here. And you can see all of these different values have been recorded. Now they are listed in inches. Sometimes they're going to be in millimeters. You'll have to do the calculation to verify which one, uh, if it's asking for a different unit than what you have for information. So check these values against any reference material you have typically coming from the OEM. You can see all this here, so we're going to go next. Now it's cleared out those values so that we can actually perform the adjustment. Now you can see it gives us some directions here before we do the calibration. You can see we need to check tire pressure, need to make sure the headlights are off, ignition should be key on engine off as we have it right now. Uh, the camera field of vision in front of the vehicle needs to be clear, so that's important. Um, a lot of shops struggle with this when they're doing a calibration. You don't want to have a bunch of stuff on the floor, in the field of view of the camera, because remember this camera is going to be looking for a specific target, but if there's something else that it thinks is a target, it could incorrectly calibrate and cause a major problem for you. So make sure your field of view is, view, excuse me, field of view is clear. Uh, also, you can see that lighting is important. Uh, you don't want to have reflective or shiny objects in the way, and you do want to have the room sufficiently lit as we do currently. And Hawkin, I'm going to go ahead and jump in on that. So if we look at the way that we have set up in this building, we have plenty of space. But if we look in front of the Toyota, we can see that we have two big black objects that are against a white wall. And the way that these targets work is they work on contrast. So it only sees black and white. It doesn't see color. So these could be misinterpreted as targets. So since this is going to be directly in front of our vehicle, we're going to go ahead and move these out of the way to give it a nice blank canvas to work against. Uh, the other thing that he mentioned was lighting. Uh, in here, we have good, consistent lighting. We don't have a bunch of shadows on the floor or inconsistent shadows on the wall. So that's going to be a big key to this as well. So I'll go ahead and get these moved out of the way so he can go to the next step. So here... We're just talking about the tools walking us through and explaining that we do need to make sure we have a level surface. Uh, we're also looking for a certain amount of clear space forward of the vehicle for the calibration, as well as side to side. So you wanna make sure all of that area is clear uh, when you're doing this calibration. We'll go to the next step here. You can see now they ask us to check the levelness of the ground. Again, this is another thing that's very important to make sure you're doing. So, you know, if you're doing this mobile, it is important that you're checking this, especially outside. If you're doing this in a shop, also important that you're checking the floor in the shop for levelness. The next step here is the tool is going to ask us for which equipment we are using. We are using the ADOS mobile. So it gives you a couple of different things, just some warnings you need to read through. We're going to go ahead and here. Now it's just telling us what the function of this is. Okay, so we're on the screen with the values and you can see here everything's read out in degrees and millimeters. Millimeters obviously is the preferred unit of measure. If your tool comes up and it is showing inches, you can go into your settings menu and you can change it to metric and then you will see everything in millimeters. Uh, millimeters is ideal because millimeters are more precise. And of course, the name of the game here with ADOS calibration is precision. So we're going to go to the next screen here. So now it's going to ask us to verify the center point of the vehicle using the plumb bobs. So Chad is going to perform that. You can see it's walking us through this, the uh, steps specifically to tell us how to set this up and which tools to use as well. You're seeing the part numbers of each tool. So you can easily go to your kit and verify which tool you need to pull out. We'll go to the next step here. Now you can see here it's also going to walk us through Further directions on putting the five axis laser here as a reflector on the rear. Very specific instructions explaining how to do this. Now we're gonna go to the next step and you can see here, we're doing 
if we uh, recall, go back to the uh, initial stage before we started the calibration, it did talk about, it showed us the same picture essentially. And it didn't give us all the measurements per se, but it did give us the general concept. So you can see that what we're looking at here is essentially the vehicle specific directions. Uh, more detailed with the specific measurements we need to be concerned about. So you can see here there's millimeter measurements and whatnot. And essentially what we've got is we're gonna be setting up the target at a specific distance forward of the vehicle. And you're gonna get to see Chad do all of these steps uh, on the video as well here. So the first step in this process, like Hawkeye was saying, is finding the center line of the car. And we're going to do that by dropping a plumb bob through the emblem. One of the beautiful parts about this vehicle is that it does have a mold mark, which is perfectly centered as well. We're gonna use our targets to put on the floor and we're going to extend our plumb bob through that center line and I'm gonna match up to those mold marks at the same time. So once we drop that down, we're gonna pull it up a little bit and that will give us our center mark for the front of our car. And then once we get that, we're gonna do that exact same thing on the back end. On the back end, I brought a couple extra pieces with me. I still have my target for the floor, my plumb bob, and my reflector. And I'll show you why here in a second. We're gonna go straight through the emblem on the back once again. I'm gonna take that off and put our our card here right in the center and once I do that I'm going to take my reflector since I'm already back here and I'm going to put that reflector right on that center line and that's going to be key to save you some steps in the process. On next pieces in our kit we're going to grab our mirror and our five axis laser. So the five axis laser whenever you turn this on there will be a red dot that comes out of the bottom and that red dot is going to go right in the center of where our plumb bob came down. So we're going to turn that guy on Put that red dot right on the center. Beautiful part about this laser is it is self-leveling, so it will do its very best. If it is out of level, you can use the leg to adjust that. I'm going to turn the, all the lasers on. Now, we put that reflector at the very back of the car, and what my goal is, is to get this laser to reflect off of that. I'm a chubby kid. I don't want to lay it down on the floor, so I'm going to use this mirror, and we're going to put that down. So I can see that back reflector. And then there are fine adjustments here that I can twist to be able to get that laser to go right on that reflector. And once it does, it will light up. So our next process is to build the box like the scan tool is showing. We're gonna remove our mirror. We're going to grab a couple of targets and we're gonna grab our wheel target. And this, according to the instructions, goes directly where the camera is. So we're going to put that right in line with the camera. And that's going to be our measurement point. So the next step in the process says that we need to come 1000 millimeters off of our center line and over to build our box. So I'm going to use the tape measure that's provided. I'm going to come off 1000. And you notice my laser line is still on. So I'm going to use that and capture that line with my target, put it at the 1000 mark. My next step from that is to come off of the bracket and we're going to come 3000 millimeters off of that bracket. So we use our same tape measure. We're going to go through the mark that we just made on the floor. On our tape measure, we're going to find 3,000. We're going to put our next target. Now, these targets don't have to be in perfect laser alignment. It's more about the measurement to the 3,000 mark that we're worried about. So now I've built a box. I have a point here, a point here, and my point there. That means that I can build a relative point up here. So we're going to go ahead and remove our laser since we don't need that piece anymore. We'll remove our tape measure and we'll get our stand in place. Now that we have the stand in place, we have our box built on the floor. We're gonna use the laser that mounts to the target stand on the mobile frame. We're going to line that up with our marks 
that we built earlier. And uh, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this laser goes forward and to the side. So now I can see that I am my 3000 where I'm supposed to be from the camera, but I'm not precision on my marks for center line. So on the back of the calibration stand, there's a fine tuning knob and we can fine tune that to be able to get that perfect alignment and we can get it uh, very, very close with that knob. And there we are. So now that we have that perfect center line, I'm going to lock this guy down and get it to where it's going to live. We're going to do that with the little feet on the bottom here. Just push down on those. If I need to do a little bit of precision after that, I can always do that fine tuning again if we need to. All right, Hawkin, what's our next step? All right, so the next step we're going to do here is we need to set the height of the frame. Uh, the tool is going to walk us through this and tell us what height we need to set this for. Uh, in this particular case, the height that we want to measure is 1,350 millimeters. Chad's going to demonstrate how our tool will uh, actually do this for you. So the 1,350 millimeters is a measurement that may not be exactly the same as what you're going to see in the OE information. And that's because it's 1,350 from here, from the bottom part of our laser measure. And we've already compensated from that point to the center of the target. So that may be a little bit different, but at the end, the center of the target will be in the exact spot. Now, a little tech tip that I've, I've realized is sometimes our floor is maybe not perfectly smooth or has a little bit of reflection to it, and sometimes the laser doesn't like it. So we can put one of our targets down upside down underneath that dot, and that gives us the ability to raise that up to our 1350 where we need to go. So we'll crank that up. Okay, so now that all of our angles are set, and we are parallel to the vehicle as we need to be. Uh, Chad is going to go ahead and extend the arms on the frame and lock them into position. And after he does that, uh, we're going to attach the target in the center position, which is what our scan tool is directing us to do. Here is the target. So how do we know what target to use for each individual vehicle? The tool will actually tell you which tool or which target you need to use uh, for the given calibration. So in this particular case, it's telling us LAM01-06-2 which is the target that Chad has here. So like I said, we're putting it in the center position. Now we are going to go ahead and hit the calibration button on the tool, and it's going to calibrate the camera for the first position. So we're gonna give it a moment here. While he's going through that process, one of the things that we didn't show is we did level the, the frame. There's levels on the top to make sure that we're level side to side and that we're level uh, front to back on that as well. So this is a three-step calibration. We've already done the center calibration. Now we have to move this target. So what do we move this target to? So now the tool is directing us to move the target to the left position at 550 millimeters. And uh, the frame here, Chad actually will show you, has the ability to, it has a measurement on the actual arm, so you can see that you have it at the correct position. So we're going to go ahead and put that at 550 and get that in place. And then we're ready for the next step, which is pretty anticlimactic. We push a button and then it beeps at us and then we go to the next third position. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit the button. Okay, that has completed the left position. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the right position, which again is going to be 550 millimeters and it's going to be in the right position instead of the left. Okay, so we're all set up. We're going to go ahead and hit the calibration button. And the calibration is complete. And actually, the, I don't know if you heard that or not, but the car did beep at us saying that the calibration was complete. Now, from there, we can pull that calibration report off the tool and use that to uh, show to our insurance company or to show to our customer that, hey, the calibration is done, it was successful, and here's the proof of that. So we didn't show you every step of this process, but we wanted to show you some of the uh, the bits and pieces where we get a lot of questions on. We wanted to show you how to do the, the placement of the targets, how to do the plumb bobs, so that way you had a better understanding. If you do have any questions, we have a full support team, uh, so feel free to reach out to us, uh, send us an email, give us a phone call. We'll help you out in any way that we can to make sure that your ADOS calibrations are successful, and that way you can make more money with this in your business. Any final thoughts? Well, no, just a very smooth process, and it's great that the tool walks you through all the steps. Uh, it kind of holds your hand through it. Once you do a few of these, you'll get much more comfortable with the process. And, uh, you know, it's just great that you do have that capability within the tool itself. So you don't have to constantly go look at some other reference information. So 
That's Absolutely. the thing I like best. That's the beauty about this kit is we give you all the bits and pieces you need to be able to start right out of the box. You don't need to go find a whole bunch of extra pieces or a whole bunch of extra small things to be able to do it. It's all contained. It, all the information is right on the tool. We have everything in the kit in the box ready for you to go. So thanks again for watching. I'm Chad with Top Don. And I'm Hawken with Top Don. And we'll see you on the next one.